In this video, what I want to do is explore how to find the asymptotes, like the vertical, the horizontal, the oblique asymptotes, as well as the X and Y intercept of a rational expression. So the first uh, problem I want to go and work on is let's go and take a look at this rational expression here of Y is equal to a 3X all over a X squared minus one. Now, we're not going to get into graphing this. I just want to be able to identify the asymptotes as well as the intercepts. So we're just going to kind of work through this, you know, step by step. What I always like to do in this case is kind of identify, you can really start wherever you want to, um, but I'm just going to kind of start with identifying the asymptotes. And the first asymptote I always like to identify is going to be the vertical asymptotes because bearing like having uh, like any holes or anything like that, um, all you simply need to do is set your denominator equal to zero and then go ahead and solve. So for my vertical asymptotes, I have an X squared minus one is equal to zero. Now a quick little tip, like if you were looking for, excuse me, if you were looking for holes, what you'd be looking for would be anything if you could simplify in the numerator and denominator would divide out. But you can see in this case, there's really nothing I can do to simplify this expression. So therefore that's why I can just set my denominator equal to zero and solve. Now here I can go ahead and factor this, or you could use the square root method and just go ahead and add a one to both sides. X squared is equal to a one, take the square root of both sides. Now remember whenever you introduce the square root, you now have to include plus or minus. So the square root of one is going to be plus or minus a one. So therefore my vertical asymptotes, right, where the function is not defined is going to be at plus or minus a negative one. Now what we want to do is take a look at my horizontal asymptotes or oblique. So if you have a horizontal asymptote, then you're not going to have your oblique asymptote. So for my horizontal asymptote, what I need to do is look at my horizontal asymptote test. And to do that, all we're simply going to do is compare the degrees of the, of the polynomial in my numerator compared to the polynomial in my denominator. And you can see here, this degree has one and this is two. So since the degree in my numerator is less than the degree in my denominator, then I'm going to have a horizontal asymptote where Y is equal to zero. So that's really cool. doesn't matter what the numbers are. As long as the degree in the denominator is bigger than the degree in the numerator, then Y is equal to zero is going to be your horizontal asymptote. All right. Now, to find the x and y intercepts, we can actually go through um, a little bit easier steps. But for the first part, I'm actually just going to write it out. So therefore, it's something you can always remember because it doesn't matter for dealing with rational expressions or logarithmic functions. <laughs> like you can always go ahead and follow um, this rule that whenever you want to find the x intercept, right, just set. So if you want to find the x intercept, just let y equal to zero. Okay. Now watch what happens here. I'm going to set my y equal to zero, and then I'm going to say a three x all over a x squared minus one. All right, now I need to solve for x. Now hopefully you recognize whenever you're trying to solve for x, you can't solve for x when x is in the denominator, right? So the first thing I'm gonna do is actually multiply, and I'm actually gonna do this a little bit. Oh, yeah, I'll keep right there. I'm gonna multiply by my denominator x squared minus one on both sides, all right? Now what happens when I do that, all right? Actually, let me go ahead and move that over just a little bit. Let me move that over. All right, so what happens when I multiply here? this x squared minus one on both sides. What happens to this? Well, over here, those go ahead and divide out. And over here, x squared minus one times zero, right? That just goes to zero. So you're left with zero equals a three x. So kind of the tip, the one thing I want you to kind of remember about this is whenever you're trying to find the x intercept of a rational equation, just set your numerator equal to zero. Now I can just divide by three on both sides and I get x equals zero is going to be my x intercept. So that's where the graph is gonna cross the x axis. Now to find the Y intercept, all we're simply going to do now for this case is we're going to set to find the Y intercept. Again, you're just going to let X equal to zero. Okay. So now we can just go with Y is equal to a three times zero. That's a zero all over a zero squared minus one. Well, three times zero is zero. Zero squared is zero minus one. So therefore we get Y is equal to a zero over a negative one, which therefore just Y is equal to a zero. Okay. So another way to kind of look at this is you can kind of think about what is the constant here. And technically you could say you have a constant of zero. So whenever you want to find the Y intercept, you can just take the constant over the constant because your variable X is always going to go to zero anyways. All right. So therefore let's just kind of recap. My vertical asymptotes are going to be plus or minus one. My horizontal asymptote is going to be at Y equals zero. My X and my Y intercepts are also going to be at X equals zero and Y is equal to zero. So it is kind of important that you can have a graph that crosses the horizontal asymptote, right? So we can't cross the vertical asymptote, but this would be an example of my graph actually having a value on, on the horizontal asymptote, which is definitely allowed. All right. So let's go and take a look at another example. Maybe one that's going to deal with maybe some little bit more factoring. So in this case, I have Y equals, um, let's just do a, a 2x squared plus a 3x plus 1 
let's do a lot of factoring, <laughs> um, times a 4x squared plus a 3x minus 1. Now, just because these are quadratics does not mean they're factorable, right? And again, if they weren't factorable, you'd either have to look into like solving via completing the square or the quadratic formula. So definitely be prepared for that because a lot of times students will get tricked up um, when they are doing, you know, rational expressions or trying to graph and they get something that's not factorable. Now, in this case, I believe I picked something that is going to be factorable. So the first thing I always like to do before I actually do any of the math, before I do the vertical asymptotes, horizontal asymptotes, like, let's just kind of see what, if they're factorable, right? Now, remember, if this is a quadratic trinomial, all quadratics can be rewritten as a product of two binomials. Now, if it's factorable, it's going to be factorable across rational numbers, right? If it's not factorable, um, then it's going to be, then you're either going to have some imaginary units or you're going to have irrational numbers. So let's go and work on this first one here. If I need to multiply to give me a 2x squared, I could have a 2x times an x, right? And then I need to do two numbers that are going to multiply to give me a 1. Well, it's either going to be a positive 1, a positive 1, or a negative 1, and a negative 1. Well, obviously, um, since my, my middle term is positive, I'm going to both want those to be a positive 1. So this is actually a really easy factoring problem. And again, you can just go back and use FOIL again to like double check that. 2x times x um, is 2x squared. 2x times 1 is 2x. 1 times x is 1x. That's 2x. I'm sorry, that's a 2x plus 1x is 3x, and then 1 times 1 is 1. That works out. All right, now this one's not going to be as nice, right? So this one's going to be a little bit more tricky. However, one thing I realize is the difference between 4 and 1 is 3. So when I'm going to set up my two factors, yes, you could do a 2x and a 2x, right? Um, however, in my opinion, I think that's going to not work out for this one. So I'm going to go ahead and try a 4x times an x first. Now, in this case, I need to get to be a, a one, right? Um, or a negative one. So now one of my one of my factors is gonna have a positive one. One of my factors is gonna be a negative one. Now, which one is which? Well, what I wanna see here is if I do multiply a four X times a positive one, right? Using my foil, four X times one, that's gonna be get four X. And then if I make this a negative one, then look at how these, see how this is gonna work out? Four X times X is four X. Negative one times X is a negative X. Well, four X plus negative X is going to be a three X. And then everything else you guys can see is going to multiply out. So that's going to work. All right. So now I have my factored form, right? So now let's just kind of go back through. Um, now let's kind of go back through our, our terms here and see what's going to be happening. Now for my vertical asymptote, remember we can't deal with vertical asymptotes where there's holes. Notice here, these X plus ones actually divide out, right? So when you're doing your vertical asymptotes, only set the denominator equal to zero. That is what we call our non-removable discontinuities. So for my vertical asymptote, I'm going to set a 4x minus 1 equal to zero, right? Add 1, divide by 4, x is going to equal to a 1 fourth. Now, this video didn't really talk about the holes, but hole is another discontinuity, all right? So therefore, we can say that um, x plus 1, because that was a removable discontinuity, is going to be my hole. So therefore, x equals negative 1 is where there'd be a hole. So if you had to graph this or you needed to understand what the domain was, that'd be something that'd be very important. All right, now let's go and take a look at my horizontal asymptote. Now for the horizontal asymptote, what I want you to recognize here is that the degree of my numerator is equal to my degree of my denominator. So that's really important because when the degrees are the same, see how they're both x squared and x squared, all we're simply going to do is take the leading coefficient of your numerator over the leading coefficient of your denominator. So y is going to equal to a 2 fourths, which again, just can be simplified to a 1 half. So that is going to be your horizontal asymptote there. Now for the x-intercept, do you remember the tip? So for the x-intercept, remember, if it, all you simply need to do is take the, all you simply need to do is take the numerator equal to zero. Now, here's where things get really, really special. I don't want to take this and set it equal to zero because then you'd have to factor it again. I already factored it. Now again, remember though, Remember, x plus 1 got divided out. That means it's a hole in the graph, right? And let me, like, let me just kind of explain this. Like, let's pretend here's a graph, right? And, like, let's pretend here's a hole. Would you say at that point that's a y-intercept? No, it's an undefined value, right? It's a hole in the graph. So that can't be a y-intercept. So my point that I'm trying to make is the x plus 1 got divided out. It's not like it, like, went away. I mean, it's still a hole in the graph. Like, it's still not defined in the domain. But what I'm trying to tell you is when you set your numerator equal to zero, don't set 2x plus 1 times x plus 1 equal to zero. This is a hole in the graph. So all you're simply going to do is set 2x plus 1 equal to zero, right? That's the only value where you could have an x-intercept. Now you subtract 1, divide by 2. x is going to equal to a negative 1 half. So the x-intercept is that x equals negative 1 half. 
Now to find the y-intercept, remember y-intercept is when x equals zero, right? So basically all you're simply doing is taking your constant over your constant. So let's say one over a negative one, which y equals negative one. And again, just to kind of re to go back and go through, you're gonna plug a zero in for x, right? That's zero, that's zero, that's zero, that's zero. So you're just gonna be left with a positive one over a negative one. All right, let's go and take a look at uh, another example here. Now this example is we're going to have y equals, maybe hopefully not as much factoring, x squared minus x minus six uh, divided by a x plus four. But I do like to practice a lot of factoring because I do think it is really, really important for you to feel comfortable and feel confident with the factoring. Because if you can do factoring rather quickly, like it's just gonna make your life so much faster and easier. Um, and then if you need to rely on quadratic formula, that's obviously something that you should you know, be able to rely on if you need to, but I don't want you to have to like do that as your first option. So I see that this is factorable or it should be factorable. It's a quadratic trimodal, so at least it's it's an option. And then basically I wanna do is what two numbers multiply to give me a negative six, add to give me a negative one. Um, and I can kind of see here, I can multiply this times x plus three times a x plus two, right? And I think that is going to work by quickly doing that in my head. And then down beneath here, I have an x plus four and that does not divide out. So we're not gonna be dealing with the whole, that's good. Um, all right, so let's go back and review again my vertical asymptotes. Set your denominator equal to zero and you're good. So x plus four is equal to zero. So x equals a negative four um, for your horizontal asymptote. Now, again, in this case, we're, again, we're comparing our degrees. Since the degree here in my numerator is larger than the degree in my uh, denominator, guess what? I do not have a slant asymptote. I'm sorry, horizontal asymptote. But now I have the opportunity for a slant asymptote. Now, again, as long as there wasn't a hole, which in this case there isn't, so therefore we now have a slant asymptote. So how do you find the slant asymptote? To find the slant asymptote, you're gonna have to go back to doing some long division, all right? So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your divisor, x plus four, and you're gonna divide that into your, um, you're gonna divide that into an x squared minus x minus six. I guess I'll turn down uh, my sound here. Okay, so therefore I'll have a x, a squared minus x minus a six, all right? So, so you take your denominator into your numerator. So x goes into x squared, x times. Then remember, once you figure that, you always divide your first term into the first term here. Then you multiply back. x times x is an x squared. x times four is going to be a positive four x, okay? Now we're just gonna go ahead and subtract the terms. So x squared minus x squared is zero x squared. Um, negative x minus a four x is going to be a negative five x and negative six minus zero is just gonna be negative six. X divides into a negative five x. Um, that is going to be a negative five times um, and negative five times negative five x doesn't really have to go this far because you're gonna have a remainder. Negative five times four is gonna be negative 20. It doesn't really matter guys. Um, Cause what's gonna happen in this case is you're just going to subtract them out. Anyways, you're gonna get a number, right? So negative six minus, well, that's gonna be like a 14. Um, anyways, the point that I'm trying to make here is X does not divide into that 14. So therefore that's your remainder. But when you're dealing with remainder, we don't really care about it. All we simply care about is what is this equation. So Y is equal to a X minus a five. Okay, so that is going to be my slant asymptote. We do not have a horizontal asymptote. Um, all right, so to find the, now let's go ahead and find the X intercept. So to find the x-intercept, again, just set your numerator. Now, this is nice because we already factored it, right? We already went through all the hard work here. So set your numerator equal to zero and go ahead and solve. Well, using the zero prior property, right? You can say x minus three is equal to zero and x plus two is equal to zero. So therefore, x is equal to a three and x is equal to a negative two. And then I'll have to do the y-intercept. I'll just do that down here. So to find the y-intercept, remember that's just gonna be constant over constant, right? So y is equal to a negative six over a positive four. And that can be reduced to y is equal to a negative three halves. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. Hopefully this video was helpful for you. And if it was, I'll look forward to seeing you in the next video.